So with all of the hype and developments around generative AI that we've seen recently, uh, I've been reading up on the European AI Act in the last week, and I found out that on this website, artificialintelligence.act.eu, you can actually access the full draft as a PDF. Now, this is, as you can see, 108 pages long and a lot of legal jargon. And while that's interesting, I'm not a legal expert. And I'm really just interested in some sort of summary, well, definitely a summary, and also then some, some more specific questions that are relevant to me uh, in my work as a developer advocate. So I remembered uh, a post from Anup Sarandran that I saw uh, passed by on LinkedIn last week about building uh, your own LLM app um, on top of ChatGPT that could sync to Dropbox documents and uh, you could query, uh, query the LLM about the content that is in your Dropbox. And I thought this could be a fun way to test out this piece of code. The code is located in uh, this public repo on GitHub. And yeah, I'm just gonna walk through it in real time and see if I can get this to work. And a big shout out here to Bobo Mursikov for putting together all the code in this repo. I'm listed as contributed here, but that's just because I found a minor typo the other day in the README, uh, and not because I've made any substantial contributions to this code. So all credit to Bobo for this one. And I'll start a timer, and let's see how fast we can get this up and running. So let's open up a code window. Adjust that so you can read along. And we'll just walk through the readme. So first of all, how to run the tool, prerequisites, make sure that Python and pip are installed. So I will go to, actually, let's just start fresh. Create a new Conda environment. Activate it. And once that's done, we can install Python. Let's do 3.11 and pip. All right. And the next step will be to clone the repository. I have already done that, so I guess I'm cheating a little bit here. Um, but that shouldn't take too much of your time and navigate into the project folder. Already done that too. Um, we'll then create an environment file and I will do this off the screen just for safety, but in here you should put your uh, API token to access uh, the chat GPT model and uh, point the script to your local Dropbox folder. So I'll do that in a separate screen here. Okay. And then let's see. Step three is optional to create a new virtual environment. Well, I'm using Conda for that, so we're all good. Then let's install the app dependencies using pip. And yeah, actually maybe what I will show, because I didn't show the pointing, but I can show, of course, my local Dropbox folder. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but uh, I've created an AI act folder and that's what I'm pointing the script to. So in the env.env file, I'm pointing the Dropbox local folder path environment variable to this folder in here. And that just contains the PDF that I've downloaded from the website I showed earlier. This is installing the dependencies. And once we've done that, step five is just running the pathway API. So let's see if this works. Mm 
looks like we've got something running here. And from the repo here, this little demo, you can see that actually this is connected to a Streamlit UI for easy um, UI and to query, uh, query the documents. So that is actually what step six is about. Ah, there we go. So we have the Python script running now. That looks like it's running well. So in a separate terminal, I'm just going to run this Streamlit UI. And of course, I should use the right conda environment to run that. It says you can now view your Streamlit app in your browser. So that's just, I should be able to just click on that. There we go. We've got our Dropbox search tool. All right, so let's see what this baby can do. Uh, let's start with a general question. Can you summarize the uh, bridge spelling, summarize the EU AI Act in five sentences? We see that this is running, presumably connecting to both um, ChatGPT as well as Pathway under the hood in order to embed the tokens and give us that an answer. The answer, I'm not going to read all of it, but let's see if it makes some sense. The EU AI Act is a proposed regulation that aims to establish harmonized rules on AI in the EU. It recognizes the potential benefits and acknowledges the risks and negative consequences. It seeks to ensure that AI is developed in ways that respect people's rights and earn their trust. Okay, sounds good and also gives me some sense of the overall purpose of this document. And this is already fantastic, because if you had asked this question to just plain old chat GPT, you wouldn't have gotten anything back, because the Draft AI Act was released after September 2021, and so is not included in chat GPT's training data. So great start. Uh, but that's not entirely new to me. Uh, what I'm specifically interested in is sort of specific applications um, of this knowledge to people doing specific kinds of things. So I'm going to just start with myself and let's say, what does the EU AI Act mean for my work as a developer relations professional who wants to help data engineers? Let's see. This is running again. All right. Let's see if this answer makes any sense. The AI Act has several implications for your work. One is the regulatory framework. So the Act proposes a regulatory framework for AI systems. You need to stay updated on these regulations and ensure that the systems developed by engineers comply with the requirements. This may involve providing guidance and support to data engineers and understanding and implementing the necessary measures. Sounds good. And we see here that this sentence trails off, probably has something to do with the token limit. But all in all, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with something that we've managed to build in, I think, just over five or six minutes. Um, pretty great. And the cool thing is that because Pathway supports real-time incremental updates, any updates you do to the files in the Dropbox will automatically be reflected in this UI. So, in an ideal world where the EU was either working on Dropbox or with some sort of version control, you could imagine that uh, this AI Act is being drafted live by multiple stakeholders and the changes are also reflected live and could be queried live um, using Pathways real-time engine. Let's try and make it a little bit more specific with a specific prompt. What does the AI Act mean for medical researchers? working with genetic data. The act may impact the development and use of AI systems. They have to comply with mandatory agreements and ensure that the systems will not pose unacceptable risks, data protections and privacy rights. All right, so again, it's quite high level. We could probably uh, improve this if we spend some more time on this. But for something that we've managed to get running in uh, just about 10 minutes, um, this is quite impressive. 
Most of all, I have to say this really just gets my imagination and enthusiasm going because it means that we can take a dry legal document, 100 pages of this, um, which frankly not a lot of people will read, but millions, billions of people uh, potentially will be affected by. We can take this information and with relatively little effort, start to build out a more accessible way for people to access this information and to understand the impact this has on their lives. Um, so far, this is just a very basic question and answer interface, but I could imagine a more nifty UI where the app is uh, set out into, for example, verticals, right? Are you coming from finance or medicine or uh, data engineering, or are you just um, a parent or something like that? And from there, start to provide information that's relevant to these specific groups of people. So I might just try and start to build something like that if I can find the time next week. So stay tuned and uh, check out the app for yourself.